Howdy, 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 folks. Today we've got a special episode. Not really. They're all kind of special to me. Except for the 100 series. I did not enjoy that one. Anyways, uh, today we've got a special thing going on. Uh, I just acquired an Anvil Carrick. And I thought, you know, it'd be nice to show people what uh, what some of the... And I'm using strong air quotes here. In-game ships are like uh, I mean this is an expensive ship in game it's it's the second most expensive ship out there in the game uh, and then on the RSI page it's it is a substantial investment to acquire uh, in game it is twenty six million six hundred fifty seven thousand five hundred alpha UEC and you can get it when it's on sale on the RSI page for $600 last time that I saw it on sale. Now that price fluctuates uh, and there is a pack that it's part of. It's, a, I want to say $1,100, $1,100. It's a lot. Uh, but that's not for the average person, so we're not going to talk about it. All right, so here is my Carrick. I went ahead and loaded her up with a few things. Uh, my Ursa is missing, but I threw a PTV in here. Uh, I mean, you can fit two or three Cyclones if you're really pushing it. There's a hover quad. So it's got quite a bit of ground carrying that it can do. It can take your stuff where you need it to go to do bunkers and things. Uh, we'll cover mission set things in a bit. But when you first walk up your ramp, and yes, the ramp takes forever to open and forever to close, be prepared for that. You have two doors. There is an, a service ladder door that you can take and go all the way up. Or you can go into your cargo area. Now the cargo area is split up into different pods. Uh, I went ahead and picked up some agrecium to show you how high the stuff stacks. I mean, it is four crates high. Uh, total cargo is around 450 SCU. Uh, I, for whatever reason, didn't think to write down the exact amount, but it's around 450. It's a lot. Uh, this is a perfectly adequate cargo vessel it flies pretty well uh, but here we are, you know there's four cargo pods uh, three excuse me and you get to the front and you have a couple of other things you can get into some turrets this is all the way at the at the back of the ship uh, you can get on this aft turret uh, the ship has four turrets but no pilot guns uh, each of the turrets has two Rhino repeaters, uh, which are size four. Uh, you can put all sorts of interesting things into different places. We got a weapons locker here. Uh, there's a, a rear elevator. We're at the the rear of the ship at the moment. Uh, I think this is going to be kind of like an armor stand up kind of thing. It's just what it looks like to me. I could be wrong. Uh, but there are other places with escape pods, and they actually are marked escape pods. I just don't think that's what that is. But I could be wrong. Uh, here's another set of weapons lockers. Here at the rear, we're going to use this rear elevator. Now, the rear elevator has a lot more options than the front elevator. The front elevator just takes you up to uh, the next two floors. But we're going to go ahead and go up to the habitation deck. This is where the pilot's bridge Oh, that's new. There we go. Hadn't experienced that before. That was an interesting uh, development. So the habitation bridge is where all the fun stuff happens. Habitation module, deck, whatever they want to call it. It's where all the fun stuff happens. So there's a... That's for the uh, emergency elevators, what that door does. Uh, 
one of the primary reasons people like the Carrick is it's got a tier 2 med bed that you can set as a spawn point. Uh, there is a limited range that you can't spawn to it, so you can't set it, you know, park your ship outside of Microtech and then go die in Arc Core and expect to be able to, to res there. But you can set it there. And it's tier 2, so it's a, a little more useful than what you could get on some of the smaller ships. We've got some extra uh, little offices here. Can't remember. I think. No, I don't think there's storage on this side. But it opens up. So it has three med beds total. You've got a tier three one, a tier three one, and a tier two. My man, I could be wrong. Well, I know the main one's a tier two. But it's got all these little accoutrements that I kind of like, actually. You know, it just kind of adds to the flavor. If you're spending 27 million credits, you know, you, you want a ship that's got some of that. All right, let's go back out and see what else the HAB deck has to offer. So we've got the main mess. I do apologize for the delay in the doors. There's a, uh, this server's the best one I've found today, and it's still problematic is the uh, phrase I'm going to use. But we've got a full kitchen. I mean, we got, looks like an oven top to me, honestly. Space oven or range. Um, sink, microwaves, looks like some uh, sriracha. Gotta have the soy sauce, ketchup, mustard. No salt, though. You know, like what, what kind of life are these poor folks living? No salt. Yeah. Probably a longer one. Uh, we come over to this side. Got some interesting little pots and pans, little knickknack type things. Nothing really opens, though, which is kind of a disappointment. But if you're looking for a ship to do some role play in, uh, this dining area is actually kind of interesting because you can you can set up and it looks like people are actually doing things so you're not just standing around you know like my videos all right let's go into the recreation room once the door decides to stop playing with me Fucking finally. all right so here we are in the rec room uh, now it's an interesting pool table. That's definitely not a uh, regulation billiards table. And we come over here. We've got some bunks for our crew. There's storage lockers for them. Uh, it has enough bunks for five crew members in here. And, of course, they've got these nice showers. And I do say nice because, I mean, look at that. Fully enclosed compared to most ships. I mean, look at all this space. Look at the options. Uh, it locked me out. Hang on. Look at these shower apps. We got we got hot, cold, auto. It's got those little nice sprayers. I mean, it's got a nice. This is a nicer shower than I've got in real life. We come out, and of course, don't forget all of your characters in this game are vampires. So when you look at yourself in the mirror, you don't appear. So I don't know how, how your dudes shave. Uh, that's got to be interesting. But uh, I love the little, the, the little details that go into some of these designs. You know, having you know the scrub brushes, you know, little toothbrushes, toothpaste. And not just like a, anybody could have made just a little thing of toothpaste, but how it's all curled in there. Got what looks like hair pomade. Oh. Nope, got a facial mask. Okay, uh, comb. I'm I'm not gonna comment on that. All the shaving stuff over here. Of course, they're disgusting because who puts your razor in the same spot you put your toothbrush? I mean, ugh, yeah. And uh, I guess uh, we're here a thousand years in the future, and they're still wearing contacts. And it also looks like vaping hasn't died yet. Uh, on to other things. Of course, mandatory. Gotta have. Uh, you know, first aid equipment nearby when you're shaving. 
All right. Okay. Let's see what's on the other side. All right, we're back in the rec room. Of course, we got to check out the toilet. I'm not quite sure. I guess someone's saving their product. Uh, hmm. Strange. Of course, uh, once again, nice little sealed off areas for you to handle your business. You don't have to worry about prying eyes. All right, let's go check out the forward section of the habitation deck. So, of course, we have the captain's nice little office. Mandatory chessboard that's also cut off so you can't actually play on it. Uh, ways for the captain to forget how inadequate his crew is at times. Gotta have the teddy bear. Interesting that a captain would have financial... Oh my gosh. So we've got uh, quite a bit of self-help books and then a, a dog fighting manual. Interesting. This looks like more like uh, our enjoyable reading. Of course, mandatory Journal of Imperial Economics. Interesting book selection, to say the least. Oh, I left a beer here. Whoops. I got a poem. Hmm. Oh, not a poem. I really wish that you could make, like, kind of like Grand Theft Auto's got the, the TV shows you can watch. I mean, I know that's asking a lot. Like, that's a whole other deal. But that just, that would be neat. You know. I kind of dig all the, all the little details, you know. Of course, the captain's got his own bunk. All right, and here's the captain's bedroom. I guess uh must be new to the ship because it hasn't even unpacked his bag. Of course, mandatory black teddy bear, which is only slightly ominous. Uh, he's got his own locker, his own little restroom. He's got a shower. All the normal things for that. I'm going to... Oh, God. Now we're, now we're trapped. All right, and then we come out onto the lower bridge. So the lower bridge is where the pilot and co-pilots sit. Uh, if you want to be, if you want to do quantum jumps and stuff, this is where you need to be. Uh, but it's not the only place that you can fly the ship from, uh, which is kind of neat. I don't, I know the 890 jump has the same kind of feature with having two bridges, but this one. Uh, the pilot seat and the other control seat can actually see out of the ship, which is kind of nice because you're not having to fly in third person. The bridge has its own elevator. We're going to go ahead and go up to the upper bridge. All right, so we've got two. We've got a gunner seat here and the support seat. There's also this fancy non-functional little map thing which I'm hoping once they add the uh, exploration gameplay becomes more useful and there's also the control seat so the command station uh, can fly the ship just like the pilot seat they cannot uh, go into quantum which is kind of frustrating but at the same time it's it's a short hop over to the elevator back down if you need to quantum the command station is actually a really nice place to fly from because of how, I mean, look at the, there's nothing in the way. 
there it's just all open glass uh, if you're flying along planet side this is a great place to do it from let's go see what else is up here we're on the technical deck now which is the third deck for the ship all right so right after you leave the bridge there are escape pods uh, once again escape pods not functional as far as I've noticed in any of the ships that have them but they are there once that becomes a thing when you come out of the bridge section the first door you come to is it's classified as a repair room I think kinda like if you've used either a vulture or a reclaimer and you spend you know you can make the multi-tool and stuff I think this is gonna be a similar kind of device but that is completely conjecture I've seen no one mention that or say anything about that so it could just be wishful thinking on my part but it does seem like if they're gonna put the room there it's gotta have a purpose we come over to this room and this is another room that I don't think its purpose is fully in yet. Uh, to me, this this looks like like the setup there looks identical to the salvage arm control for a reclaimer. Now I don't. Oh, it's the drone. Okay, so this would be the I want to say exploration aspect. It's just not added yet but the seats are there that would also explain why it looks like the seats on the reclaimer because they're also drones although it's got its own little room so that's kind of neat uh, you know going out and exploring I'm not sure if the drones are going to be only for the exploration that is a game path that I'm I'm really excited about all right, we come out of the drone room, and if you have a ship in the hangar or not, if you need to get one in there, this little console here is where you open the hangar bay doors. I currently have my C8X in there. I normally run with the C8R because I, I like to use the Carrick for bunkers myself, but. Uh, I switched it out to this just because it looks a little looks a little meaner. I think the C eight X is my my feelings on the C eight X are complicated. Uh, here's the service ladder again. You know, each of the three main decks has a service ladder entrance. We've got these hallways that go alongside the bay. I do like that the doors to the hangar bay require you to open them. It's just a little bit of extra security to keep people from breaking in and, and then using that to completely sneak into your ship. It's not going to completely stop them, but it might add a few extra steps. Everyone's seen a C8X. If not, I've got a great video on them. Come inside here. So there's that rear elevator again. The technical deck also is where you access the two side turrets so this is the starboard tur turret it's all the way down here I get really strong for some reason anvil ships give me a really strong like uh, Star Wars Imperial vibe with the color scheme and the the design elements they used for a lot of their stuff uh, we have an engineering bay here at the back like all the other engineering bays, there's not a lot going on here right now. But that's going to change pretty soon when engineering gameplay comes in. It also has its own little ladder because there are two different decks for engineering. I think this is one of the ships where engineering is going to be important. Uh, there's our, our port side turret. We'll come back up though and show you the last little bit. So we go to the rear elevator. Now the forward elevator 
cannot access the last deck, the cartography deck. Only the rear aft elevator can. And there's not a lot going on up here. I mean, there's this map that is non-functional at the moment. Although it is just kind of a cool room. I mean, I, I really like the, the aesthetic here. But if you want to EVA and you don't want to go all the way down to the ramp, we've got escape pods and then there are actual EVA doors. So we can come up here and open up. Now, it is possible to store a smaller ship in there close the hangar doors and store a larger ship or another small ship on top of the doors. Um, I haven't had any issues doing that. But I can't say that that's not just because I, I'm an incredibly lucky guy a lot of the times. So do so at your own risk and if it fails, remember that it's always someone else's fault. Not mine. Of course not. All right, we come back up. So here we are on top of the hangar bay doors. Uh, I wanted to cover the last few things about the stats for this ship. Now the hull HP is only 93,000. Now that's spread out pretty well. Um, so there's not any single point that's super weak. But that's not an incredibly large amount either. It's half of a Constellation Andromeda's hull HP. However, the shield HP on this is 230,000, which is very substantial. Now, the pilot doesn't have any guns. I've, I've mentioned that already. But if all of your turrets are manned, you're looking at a DPS of 4,096 which is pretty tough, but it's also spread out, so that's, there's not going to be any any chance that all of those guns are able to hit one target. It's just not going to happen. However, you're looking at the top-mounted gun, there is a rear lower gun on the rear of the ship, and there's the two side... Well, these are all turrets, not guns. There are the two side turrets. Now, the side turrets actually extend out pretty far, so they do have a really good range. Uh, of motion they can see and turn and acquire targets pretty well the top turret doesn't extend like the side turrets do but it does have full 360 uh, degree radius as far as how the ship flies uh, in atmosphere it flies how it looks like a very very large ship so in atmosphere, it's 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 going to struggle to turn. However, uh, it's got really big engines that are really powerful, and it is fast. I mean, the SCM speed on this is faster than some fighters at 208. In space, it turns really well. For how large it is, it turns extremely well. The maximum speed on it is 1,236 meters a second. So it's it's not just fast up to its SCM it actually has a, a good max speed and it, it accelerates pretty well. I mean if you're boosting and you're in space you're going to get up to speed pretty quick. So I mentioned early in the video uh, that I would talk about the game loops so this ship can do most of the game loops you want to do. I mean it is a great ship for bunkers. In fact, if you're running bunkers with a large group, it is a magnificent ship because you have someone fly either, you know, like a Cutlass Black or, or a medium smallish ship that can carry quite a few people. Have them park that on top of the hangar here, pop around, do your bunkers, you know, especially if you're around like Hurston where you're not going to have to jump really far distances. You're just going around one uh, planet or moon. Uh, it's it's a great option. You know, have the C8R down in the, in the hangar bay for if you need to pick someone up for 
for healing them. You know, you've got the med beds inside that you can also set those for your spawn points for the people running the bunkers. It's got plenty of storage for ground vehicles. I mean, it's a great, great ship for running bunkers. Uh, doing cargo with that 450-ish uh, SCU of cargo space, that's a lot. I mean, that's that's up there with the big boys, you know, the Hercules and the Caterpillars. You know, it's it's a little less than the two cargo variants of the Hercules, and it's it's less than a Caterpillar. But it's also a lot more flexible than either of those two ships, especially when you think about the fact that its main gameplay loop isn't even in the game yet, and that's the exploration side. And I think this ship is uniquely designed for that in a way that a lot of the other exploration ships are variants of other ships they weren't built ground up for that the cost is a lot i mean it's expensive in game it's very expensive on rsi uh however i i do think it is absolutely worth it uh i, I i'm not going to here and tell anybody to spend 600 dollars on anything but in game for 27 million I think this is a better purchase than an 890 jump for most people, especially if you're using it for an org or for a large group of friends. It's just going to be a much more useful ship than the 890 jump, which is its main competitor. Uh, The 890 jumps another six or seven million on top of this has less cargo, uh, can fit a little bit different complement of vehicles. So it it does have uh, extra versatility there. However, the 890 jump, if you're running vehicles, you can't really carry any cargo. And if you're carrying cargo, you can't really carry a lot of vehicles. So keep that in mind. You know, if you're wanting to run bunkers or have ground vehicles, like I love this ship because I can set it up to run bunkers and then do other stuff while I wait for people to get on. I can I can go s- visit planetary sites and pick up uh, trade goods while I'm waiting for folks to get on and, and come meet me somewhere. You know, if it's a friend that's got their own C8R, I can take mine out and then they can just have a nice place to park it and know that it's safe and I have to deal with any of that. Uh, it's it's nice. You know, it's got a massive complement of, of guns. It's got a massive storage capacity. Uh, the internal capacity having those lockers, people can save their own things that they want in their own lockers and then be able to come pick them up. I have a feeling uh, you folks are going to be seeing this ship quite a bit over the... Uh, next few weeks well i'd say probably starting about two weeks from now you're going to be seeing this ship quite a bit uh in some other content that we're working on uh that's all i've got about the anvil carrick uh i do want to say i don't know how long the edited version of this video is going to be but it took me almost two hours to film and about half of that was just me waiting for doors to open the servers are really rough right now uh, allegedly 3.19.1 is coming out any day now I cannot wait uh, as far as housekeeping stuff hey guys if you like what I'm doing please like and subscribe hit that bell icon leave me some comments uh, the channel's growing every day there's new subscribers I'm getting great con- great comments uh, which is fun it's, it's nice to hear some things I'm getting to learn some things from you guys hopefully I'm, I'm sharing some information that y'all might not have or might not be able to find in other places And uh, at the end of the day, I'm enjoying myself. So, it's been fun, and I can't wait to see you all out there in the verse.